Hi, my name is Kira and I'm an OpenSciad teacher and facilitator and I'm excited to provide you with an overview of lesson three of the Light and Matter unit. This is a really great lesson because it gives us some strong foundational knowledge about how light and the materials in our box models interact to cause our phenomenon. Let's get started. So in lesson two, we figured out that when we change the location of the light in the box system from room A to room B, the phenomenon reverses as well. Um, and then we also see the phenomenon best when there is a bigger difference in light between room A and room B. And then for us to see an object, we have to have light. Light must leave the light source, bounce off the object, and travel in a direct path to our eyes. So in this lesson, we're wondering what happens when light shines on the one-way mirror material. This lesson is an investigation lesson that lasts about three days. It should take about 25 minutes of materials prep. There are no devices or related videos needed for this particular lesson. On day one of the lesson, we are going to summarize what we figured out in lesson two and motivate that need to see um, the materials of glass and a regular mirror since the one-way mirror seems to behave like both. And then we'll kind of compare uh, those materials with, one, with each other and share out some of our observations. In another one of our key moments, we're going to observe and compare how light interacts with those materials. So we'll shine a flashlight on all three materials and share our observations. And then we'll build a, uh, an understanding of what's going on with those materials and create models of what we observed in our next key moment. And then we're going to develop an experimental question because we want to know how much light was reflected and transmitted by all three materials. On day two, we're going to add the science terms transmit and reflect to our word wall. So they were introduced in day one. We're adding those as words we earn in day two. We're going to refine our experimental question. Again, we want it to be clear and concise about how we're going to measure the amount of light that's reflected and transmitted. And then we'll plan and conduct in the measuring light investigation. So we're going to not only identify the experimental question, but also some variables. What do we need to keep the same between the groups? Um, and then we'll collect some data on that. Um, and then on day three, we're going to share our data and look for patterns in that data. We will conduct a consensus discussion in a scientist circle where we will um, then update our class consensus model and our science ideas chart. We'll update our progress tracker, and then we will revisit our driving questions board, and we're going to kind of motivate that need to see what the one-way mirror material is made of that makes it interact with light the way that it does. So we figure out in day one that light travels in straight lines. That is a reinforcement of learning um, from lesson two. Day two, we will uh, reinforce that when light shines on an object, it is reflected or bounces off of the object or it's transmitted, which means it passes through. Um, and day three, we are going to determine that depending on an object's material, light may be reflected or transmitted or it could do both. So in our first key moment, part two, um, students are going to look more closely at the material that makes up the one-way mirror and we'll compare it structurally to glass and regular mirrors. Um, and then after that, we're going to shine some light on those and compare and contrast what happens with that as well. Um, in part three, we're going to have a uh, facilitating building understandings discussions. Um, where we share what we noticed from part two and come to an agreement about what we saw. So students are going to determine that there was reflection off of all three materials, uh, but in different amounts. And they're also going to notice that about the light that's transmitted through the materials. Uh, it's definitely different amounts as well for that. And the big move here is that the teacher should facilitate the need for actually measuring the amount of light reflected or transmitted, and that's going to help us better understand this material that we are working with. On day two, students are going to plan an investigation of the less on this lesson, um, and we'll work through identifying our experimental questions and variables together before we conduct that experiment. We want to keep it as controlled as possible. The teacher is going to create a public record of our experimental question and our uh, variables so that students are all consistent um, from group to group. 
and we will utilize those light meters to measure actual quantitative data um, of the light that's reflected and transmitted. Okay, and then on day three, we will have a consensus discussion where we identify patterns that we saw in the data. We're going to update our class consensus model and our science ideas chart with information. Um, that information would be that glass transmits the most light but reflects the least. Um, a mirror is going to transmit no light but reflect the most. And we're going to see that that one-way mirror transmit le transmits less light than the glass but reflects slightly more. So it's behaving like both the mirror and the window or the glass. Um, and then we are going to create a scale for comparison. Um, so you can see that um, on this slide as well. And then we will update our consensus model to show that um, the amount of light we start with and the amount of light that we end with is going to change. So from here, we wanted to know more about the material that the one-way mirror is made of and how it interacts with the light to create the phenomenon we observe. So we're going to brainstorm some ways that we might be able to investigate that. All right, tips and tricks. So be sure to remind students to keep their fingers on the outside of each material. Um, the teacher edition suggests using tape or these um, these photo mat frames to keep your materials in. That's just going to help keep those uh, grimy fingers off of there. And that's also going to help us be consistent with the amount of light that gets reflected and transmitted through these materials. Um, darken the room as much as possible during the investigation so that um, when students are working with the materials in the flashlight, we get um, accurate data. We're not getting that ambient light in there. Um, Part of materials prep, uh, I think probably what takes the longest for me is double checking that there are batteries installed and working in all of the light meters um, and the flashlights prior to the investigation. There's not a whole lot else other than printing handouts. Um, and then a suggestion that I use in my classroom um, that you can see shown on this picture is I use large binder clips as stands for my materials. Um, that way you don't have to have a, a student holding the material in place. This is especially helpful um, when we work through the, um, through the investigation. Um, one thing that I've noticed a lot in this particular investigation is that there's a lot of variation in the data shared from the measuring light investigation. This can prompt a really great discussion about um, controlled variables and if there's anything else that we maybe could have controlled better, um, but encourage students to look at patterns across the data, um, such as in the light reflected data, we see that every group's lowest number came from the light reflected from glass and their highest numbers were reflected off of the regular mirror rather than focusing on specific numbers. So we see some vast variation there. Um, if we look at the one-way mirror um, in the light reflected, we have 20 versus 120 and 250. So um, looking for patterns across the data rather than just within it. Uh, Word wall wise, we are adding our uh, reflect and transmit cards to our word wall. We will also encounter words uh, that will get reinforced throughout the year, um, which are independent variable, dependent variable. You may even add controlled variable in there um, and experimental question. All right, and posters wise, we are going to um, look back at our driving question board. We're going to add to our science ideas chart. Materials for this lesson specifically would be our light interactions model, uh, the measuring light investigation setup, that chart that the teacher uh, uses to say the experimental question and variables, um, the measuring light class data, and then that light reflected and transmitted scale. So there's a little bit of poster work here in this lesson um, that's specific to this lesson. We're also going to create those um, word wall cards that'll be part of our future lessons, and then that hybrid model in part 12 where we show how the light changes as it reflects and, or the amount of light changes as it reflects and transmits through a material. Okay, so I hope that this lesson goes well for you. I hope your students see some really awesome patterns um, and are able to kind of motivate that need to see what this material is made of. I can't wait to go through lesson four with you, and I hope that you have a great time.